Welcome to the Art of Booking and More. This is an advanced booking training for our friends in Australia. I hope you enjoy it. I have to tell you everything I learned about the business. I learned really growing my business. I lived through, I learned from my kids. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. Kind of anecdotal. Number one, ask, what you, ask for what you want. Um, again and again and again. Kids have really short memories. They think because they ask you one time and you said no, doesn't mean I can't ask you in five minutes. You know this is true. Average four-year-old asks 437 questions a day. Ask for what you want. It's just that simple. Number two, spontaneous is always more fun. Active imaginations figure out cool, fun, new things to do. And that's the way it is growing a business. Figure out a new way to get to people, get together with people and have a show and talk about the opportunity. Reach outside the box. Do something different than you're comfortable with. Spontaneous is always more fun. I used to tell people I did all these theme parties. When they'd ask me if I did, I'd say yes. And if I didn't do it, then I got to make it up. Be spontaneous. Lesson number three, clean up comes later. Never ever clean up while you're doing your primary activities, booking shows, talking to people. You know, how is a lot of stuff on Facebook um, driving your business? How is doing your orders driving your business? Take care of that later at night. Talk to people. Be with people while you can. Cleanup comes later. Lesson number four from kids. Always find new people to play with. Kids are always looking for new people, new people, or new fun surprises. It's like that with your business. New chains give you all kinds of exciting new opportunities. And lesson number five, laugh out loud. Just take a breath and laugh. Don't you feel better? That's what kids do. They just laugh when they get upset. They'll just laugh and go off. We can do the same thing. So you can see, really, those are great lessons for our kids. Because people who are crazy enough to think they could change the world really are the ones who do. That's Steve Jobs, actually, who said that. Those are just great anecdotal little things to set off our training. Um, any questions you have on those? The five things I learned from my kids to grow my business, comment on the video line. This is posted on YouTube. And any comments, wherever this platform is on, if you comment on there, we'll try to answer it for you and uh, give you the question. Now, really, our training today is about the art of booking. And I have the great benefit of hindsight. I have 30 years in direct sales that I can look at, not just my own direct sales business and how I did, but I can look at people, I see people all the time in a variety of businesses over 30 years in a number of companies, and the most successful ones do the exact same thing. They all do, so it gives us a great opportunity in our art of booking to do that. And booking, really there are four things we do in our business, and the first is booking. And booking is a skill. It's a skill we learn. It can be taught like riding a bike. Um, they don't know how and they're scared. That's why new fashion directors generally don't book or don't ask people to book. And the question I ask you is, what is your system for booking? So within your team, within your group organization, whatever group you're in now, what, how do you teach people to book? Do you teach them to ask? Do you teach them to play a game? One or the other, but everyone has to have a system by which they book. Number two is hostess coaching and party planning or hostess coaching is a discipline. And it is a discipline you have to get yourself in the habit of, give them guidelines, give them a hostess coaching envelope, teach them what to stay step by step. And how much do you train on planning your hostess within your business? Because $1,000 shows just don't happen. They're planned to happen. So what's your discipline about hostess coaching? Do you give every hostess kind of the same steps to have a successful show? The third thing we do in our business is we recruit, and recruiting is really a feeling. When you're excited, you recruit. And you know this is true because you see how there are recruits brought in by brand new fashion directors. Someone who doesn't have any skill, no discipline, they just have the feeling and they're already recruiting. How much do you focus, how much do we focus on the positive feeling of our opportunity? I say this constantly. I really haven't seen anybody not benefit from trying us. I mean, maybe they don't do much. Maybe they don't last long, um, you know, in the business working. But no one, like, gets hurt joining Park Lane. We're an amazing company where you can start and make money next week. You make money this week if you want. So recruiting is a feeling. When we have that feeling, we share it. 
And last but not least, promoting. Lots of promoting happens um, down in Australia and all around. But promoting is a passion, and it really says I'm all in. And that I'm going to give the best that was given to me, I'm going to give to you. That's what I get to do around the world with our franchises. And so how early do you plant that seed about becoming a manager? How early do you plant that 1,000 in sales and one recruit and you can be a branch director? Because it's easy in Park Lane. And we want people to do that because it does say they're all in. Now, we're really going to talk specifically about booking. And as we mentioned, booking is a skill. It's just like riding a bike. Remember when we learned how to get to ride a bike and mom let go and just it can be taught. You can learn how to be a great booker. And the more you do it, the better you get. It is just like riding a bike. The more we did it, we didn't want to do it all the time, we got good. And once you start booking and you have great success, guess what? You will want to do it all the time. What do the best do? The best everywhere, now across countries and across oceans, I see the same thing. Good bookers never ask yes or no questions. Actually, good closers in our business. So good people who you know are good at closing on sales, they never ask yes or no questions. They assume everybody's going to say yes, and they ask positive choice questions. Now, we're going to give you some great examples of what we mean by that, but it's important also to know why people book. You know, I always like to know what people's objections are ahead of time so I can address them in my presentation so they won't come up. Makes sense, doesn't it? There are three reasons people book shows. Number one, by far, is free products. Now, remember, this is why people book shows. They want to earn free product. Their wish list is big, and they see they can get a lot of things for free, and they can get a lot of those $140 items for $19. That's number one. Number two, they book because they want to help the hostess. If the hostess has a three booking corsage, or the hostess tells them, gives them a ticket if they book, if the hostess helps, it helps your bookings because it's the second big reason people book. Not because it's part of the program or anything. It's why people book. And thirdly, it's because they like you. They're going to invite you, a stranger, into their home, to a pub, out to the patio, around at a bar, whatever. But they're going to invite you, and they need to like you. They, they, you engage them about our jewelry, and you added value to the presentation. This research was from 2006 here in the USA, the biggest direct sales market in the world. And it really defined down to what's in it for me. That's what the hostess wants to know. What do I get free? How do I help the hostess? And I like you. Now, that's really what they need to know. So now you kind of know what they like. Now we've got to drill down our presentation. They need to know what's in it for them. They need to know what's in it for their guests. And they need to know what they have to do. So now that you've given them the reason, it's the free product, it's helping the hostess, yeah, they're going to do it. They like you. Okay, what do they get? What do their guests get? And what are they going to have to do? That's the next three things they're thinking. You know they are. And the better you address them, the more success you'll have. What do the very best do? Here's, number, here's the top five. The best bookers I've ever seen across all platforms in many different companies. These are the top people. I know the top people in many companies I worked with. And these are what they do. Number one, they never ask yes or no questions. You're going to hear some role playing where we do that. But if you ask a woman a yes or no question, you will get a no 97% of the time. That's a proven fact. So don't ask yes or no questions. Number two, they offer to pencil you in. When you're talking with your diary and you're asked, trying to find a date with someone, when they hesitate, say, well, let me tell you what, let's pencil you in. Let me just write in pencil a date where you think will be best for your family and friends, and then I'll call you back in a couple days and we'll see if that should be in pen or if we can erase that and move that on. A pencil with your diary is really important. Number three, the best always show plan the hostess within 48 hours. After she's booked, within the next two days, you have to show plan that hostess. If not, she forgets all the reasons she booked the show, and she forgets what you told her, what's in it for her, what's in it for her guests, and what's, uh, what she has to do. So you've got to show plan them after they say yes. Do it in the next 24 hours. Number four, all the best either ask everyone to book or they play a booking game. We're going to talk about that. But you have to ask everybody. You can't have happened to you what happened to me. Very early in my career, I was you know, at the dining room table writing out orders, and it was a good show, and I was almost done, and an older lady, Harriet, came up to me, gave me her order form. I just figured it out. I was ready to be done, tore off her receipt, said, Harriet, thank you so much. 
And she looked at it and she said, I was going to book a party, but I guess I'm not now. And I said, gosh, I'm sorry, Harriet, why were you going to book a party and you're not? And she said, because you asked everybody else if they wanted to have a show and you didn't ask me. And I figured you didn't want to have a show with me. <coughs> that still chokes me up. Don't ever let anybody feel like that. Ask them or play a booking game. And last but not least, number five, they over-communicate. All the best really communicate on phone, on face message, on Viber, on, on all kinds of different ways. Keep in contact with your hostess. Now, in the booking process, or we call it the booking waltz, it actually some 50 years ago in, in a company I started with, um, that was called the booking waltz, the five steps. You get yourself prepared, and then you, you know, one, two, three, four, one. So here they are. Number one, you get your prospect in a yes mood. You ask a couple questions that anybody would say yes to. Um, hey, Sue, did you really enjoy the show tonight? Wasn't it great? I saw you love that Imagine necklace. Those are, she's getting in a yes mood, and I'm kind of shaking my head anyway. I'm helping. Number two, offer the opportunity to book a show. This is where we're going to talk about the positive choice questions. It's not, do you have fun tonight at the show? Do you, have a, you know, do you want to have a party? It's, Sue, thinking of your friends and the people you'd invite, do you think a night during the week or a weekend is better? That's a positive choice question. Um, okay, they have an objection. And most of the time I think, I don't always think, although I kind of do, I guess, I believe, <laughs> that when I ask that question, they're just going to tell me um, a night during the week or a weekend, and most do. I was just in the UK. I, everybody always answers that question. They never go, oh, no, I don't want to do this. So, um, so at, when they give you an objection, you need to acknowledge that, and the feel felt found is the best way. Um, oh, I, I couldn't do this. I don't have enough time. I understand how you feel, Sue. I felt that way, too, about having a Parkland show or any home show until I found out that really with this, all it takes is one bag is my demonstration. We can do it anywhere at a pub, out, out in the, uh, the dining room, on the patio, anywhere. And I found it only takes about an hour, an hour and a half. I give a lot, got lots of free jewelry, and it didn't take much time. All I needed to have was, you know, some coffee and donuts or some iced tea and, you know, cookies. You help them solve their problem. Whatever that objection is, is it's a problem. They don't see they can do this, and you help them solve that problem. And then you have to close again. You constantly close, and you do that by saying, so realize that it's only going to take about an hour, hour and a half, and it can be anywhere, even during a lunch hour, you know, even at work during a lunch hour. Think of the people you'd invite and the people you'd like there. Do you think a night during the week at work or a weekend would be better? So we offer that positive choice close again to get them to say, give us, a, give us a close. Now, who do we talk to as we're looking at bookings? Well, we use an acronym called FRANKS, and you should always have a current list of people you can talk to. Remember lessons from my kids? Just because they said no once doesn't mean they say no ever. Remember how many questions the kid asked? So you should have an ongoing list of people who you can talk to when you can call them back. FRANKS is the way you remember that, and that stands for FRIENDS relatives, acquaintances, it's people I know, my neighbors, my kids' friend parents, when my kids were small, uh, their friends' parents were the people we hung with. And last but not least, if you have a spouse or significant other, they're frank list. So they have a number of people you can contact too. And you should always have that hot list of people that when it's time for something big, like the month of May, and with everything going on, you have a list ready of people you can contact. Now, these are the objections you hear. I don't have time. I'm too busy. No one will come. I don't know enough people. I don't do home shows. And so each one of these objections, and these are the most common four, would go somewhere like, okay, Sue said, we already talked about Sue with time. Um, no one will come. Sue, I understand how you feel. I, I, I felt that way too. I thought, my gosh, I'm going to have a show and no one's going to show up and have less food until I found out that really – your fashion director is going to help you. They're going to do an e-line, an evite invitation. They can also give you physical invitations you can pass out. And the best way to, to really get people to come is just to call and ask them what they're doing on your scheduled date. Remember, some will and some won't. That's okay. All it really takes is you and me and just two to three other friends, you, me, and three, is all it takes to have a really successful Park Lane show. So I don't want you to think you have to have ten. Now, you can take your catalog and get orders at work. 
but just you, me, and two to three friends is all it takes. Realize that it's not going to take a lot of people and you're not going to have to have a lot of people. Do you think a night during the week or a weekend would be better, Sue? I don't know enough people. I understand how you feel, feel, Sue. I felt that way until I found out that I just went through. My, my fashion director helped me with a Franks, friends, relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, kids, friends, parents, and my spouse. And, and I went through and I thought, friends, okay, what three friends do I know? Do you know three friends? Can you tell me three friends? Cool. How about um, relatives? Three relatives you'll invite. Well, all your relatives aren't around here. Okay, good. So we can't do any relatives. Your husband have any relatives here? Okay, good. Acquaintances, people you just know in this area. Neighbors, let's talk about right, left, across the street. Um, and so realizing that there really are probably quite a few people you know, and really if even a fourth of what you invite show up, you're going to have two to three plus me. Um, do you think a night during the week or a weekend would be better? And lastly, I don't know home shows. This is easier now than ever with Park Lane because my kit is a bag. I have a bag with my jewelry and a bag with my catalogs and supplies. I can do this anywhere. We don't do home shows. I don't do home shows. Pugh, Sue, I understand how you feel. I felt that way, too, until I found out that this right here is the party. I can take this anywhere you want. Your lunchroom, at the bar after work. We can go over to a friend's house and have Prosecco. We can do it around the river, uh, just sitting at a table. I can go anywhere because I'm like you. I don't want to be stuck in the, in the house in summer. We can do it anywhere. I don't do home shows anymore, either. So think of your friends and the people you invite. Do you think a night during the week or a weekend would be better? Four most common objections, just some dialogue and role play on how you overcome those. The key is to act, is to make that frank list out, to look at the training that we shared, to write out what you're going to say, and really take the time to act and make booking calls or go meet people in person and share the opportunity to book a show. Hey, I want you to comment on this too as we talk about the art of booking. Please, on the video section of comments underneath this on our YouTube channel, please write down any questions you have related to this video. If you do, we'll make sure to reply and get you an answer. And we thank you so much for taking time. Sorry it couldn't be live, but watching our recording of the art of booking.